You know, it's not very often that I get completely blindsided by something these days, but today is just such a day. This is the Mossberg MC2C, which is the compact variant of Mossberg's MC2 line, which is their entry into the compact striker fired nine millimeter handgun market. And as far as I can tell, this thing is wiping the floor with what everybody else is doing these days. And I also have the subcompact variant, so the SC model, but I'm gonna dedicate this video to the compact model and we'll touch on the subcompact variant a little bit farther downstream in spring when we're getting closer to summer carry season. The first thing that really jumps out to bite you when you take one of these things to hand is the thinness of the profile. For comparison purposes, this is a Glock 19. As you can see, substantially thinner. So we've got the optimization for a carry setup to reduce that printing signature without really compromising the uh, capacity of the firearm or the comfort because there is a little bit of a swell right here in the grip region to make sure that you fill out the interior of the hand so it's not slopping all over the place like some of those little micro carry pistols do. Since we're on the topic of capacity, let's go ahead and take a look at the magazine because there's a few things that I want to highlight here. Uh, first and foremost, this is a steel construction magazine. It is a 14 round standard capacity magazine and has witness points here for 5, 10, and 14. The spare magazine is a 16 capacity magazine. It has a high visibility follower and it is rib for your pleasure. Uh, Struck magazine extraction, that's what it's for. But there's also a context clue here if you see. The lockup port is on both sides of that magazine. And that typically indicates that we have the capacity for a reversible magazine release. And indeed, under further inspection, we do have a reversible magazine release. It's really easy to change out. You just pull back on the spring, flip the part around, put the spring back, and you're good to go for those of you who shoot with the wrong hand. The magazine release does only work one way as installed, and in my opinion, that's the correct way to do it because if you have a truly ambidextrous magazine release, then you have to make the thing much larger, and it has to go somewhere, and usually that's into your primary hand. So this thing has been slickified on the one side, but on the operational side, it has a very aggressive star-style pattern pattern and that star style pattern extends to other parts of the gun namely on the grips here that make up the palm swells and you can also find it up here on your index points for your uh, thumb balance as well as the I don't know if this works for everyone but for my hands the uh, index finger fits right there in the opposite side index point. There are actually four variants of this pistol, but two of them don't matter, and we're not gonna be covering them here today because they are a variant for your freedom-hating states that have a magazine capacity limit. And then a variant that has a manual safety for those untrained individuals out there that think they need an extra dongle on their firearm. The two mainstream variants, though, are tritium and non-tritium, and the price is reflected. One of them's got $100 worth of tritium sights on them. These are True Glow tritiums, and they are a U-notch uh, forward-sweeping sight that's serrated on the back, forward-sweeping, so that it clears your clothing on the way out, doesn't get bound up, but it remains forward-sweeping on the front, so if you need to grip it off of your clothing or your belt to rack it one-handed, then that is possible. I did also check to see if there were after factory offerings for this and excess does offer after factory uh, tritium sites for the mc2 project so if you're looking for something uh, other than the true glue setup that personally i'm not a u-notch fanboy and the white sites are also u-notch but for those of you who are optics on pistols people and don't really care about the sights one way or the other, the gun does come optics ready from the factory, but we're going to talk about that here in a second because I want to spend some actual time on what they've done with the optics cut to wrap up the rest of the ergonomics of the pistol, the slide stop. I would classify this as a slide stop, not a slide release, simply because there's not a whole lot of real estate to work with. However, the way they have cut the recess point on the slide for this thing the geometry makes it so that it's pretty easy to drop, even though there's not a whole lot to purchase. That said, I'm more of an over-the-top kind of person anyway. I don't really use the slide release on most of the firearms that I have, and they have done some very good work with the serrations on this gun, both at the front for your press check serrations. They're at sort of like, I would say, probably a 30-degree angle on both the front and the rear, but instead of just being square cuts they're actually triangle cuts so they come to a point and they bite into that hand you are not letting go of this 
accidentally. They jump out and get you. The last interface between you and the high velocity chunk of lead that you're about to send down range is the trigger. And this one uses a flat profile trigger with a little hook on the end of it to keep you from falling in. But it also incorporates the dongle that we're used to seeing in the form of a trigger safety in most tr striker fire pistols today. I love this trigger in one dimension. I like it on the brake. It's beautiful on the brake. What I am less hip about is the reset. Not quite there, not quite there, not there it is. So it's a little bit longer than I'm typically used to seeing. And th that's not to say that it's wrong. It's just, if you're used to shooting a standard striker fire pistol trigger, then there may be an adjustment period. So there were a few times when I was out there shooting where I expected the, the gun to be at reset and it wasn't quite there, so I had to give it a second effort. But by the time I finished my thousand rounds on the pistol, uh, it, it was like I'd been shooting it for years. It's not really that big of a deal. Just know that right out of the box, it's a beautiful trigger on the in, and you may have a little bit of adjustment time on the out. And optics on pistols. This is currently wearing the Swamp Fox Sentinel, which is a JMS style optic. But the shroud that covers the optics radio capability from the factory is made out of the same uh, DLC coated stainless steel that the uh, slide is made out of. But what's interesting about the way that they've done this is they've cut the slide low enough so that you can get a low witness for your sights through the housing of the optics. So I was able to zero this optic without ever leaving my house. And then when I get out to the range, if I have any fine adjustments, I can do them there, but I'm pretty much ready to rock. Now that said, one of the things that sometimes a manufacturer will do, depending on the real estate that they have for their slide cut, is sometimes they'll run out of height. And that caused them to have to bore the slide all the way through. Mossberg has designed this from the ground up in a way that doesn't require them to mill all the way through the slide for those screw holes. And that's important because if you're putting Loctite in those holes, which you should be, uh, well, sometimes that stuff can drip down in, particularly if it gets hot and it's been doing that for a long period of time. Now, as a side note, Mossberg, you did miss the Loctite on one of your bolts. It lasted about 600 rounds before it started to rattle loose, which coincidentally was the right amount of time for integration of this optic. And then to wrap it up here today, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on the uniqueness of the takedown of this gun. Oftentimes, um, there can be a crisis of ideology when we're talking about uh, striker fire pistols because we teach people to treat all guns as though they're loaded all the time, but then the first thing that they do when they go to uh, clean their firearm, to disassemble it, is to pull the trigger. And sometimes people have a problem with that. Personally, I don't. However, what Mossberg has done is not required that. What you do to disassemble this thing is simply lock the slide to the rear, and then there's a button back here. You push in on that button and pull down on the back plate. The back plate comes right off, the striker comes out, and then the slide comes right off. The base model is somewhere around the five and a half mark as far as MSRP. The tritium variant is somewhere around the six and some change. This gun is punching way above its weight as far as all the features that have been incorporated into it. And in my opinion, it's definitely something that should be on your radar if you're looking at something that is purpose built from the ground up for a concealed carry handgun. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a sub. And if you have something to say to me, then please, by all means, sound off in the comment section down below. I read all of your comments.